Welcome to sports everyone. I'm Damian Bartonic and you know what time it is time to talk about these wall Hawks because recently they well, not because recently because they recently made headlines after being ranked number nine in the 3A preseason polls. The rankings were completed and released by the nationally recognized outlet Dave Campbell's Texas football. The Hawks are coming into this season after an 11 and three campaign just one year ago for first year head coach Craig Slaughter. This is an honor for his team but it's also just another time they've met their own standard. You know, really, it's it's a tribute to the program that's that's been in place, you know, and the kids that we have, the talent that we have. I mean, it's, uh, you know, we have high expectations in Wall, and that's, again, as those rankings come out throughout the year in, in any sport, I mean, it, you know, football, baseball, basketball, uh, you know, I think you'll very often see, see the Wall Hawks up there somewhere. Slaughter also knows that at the end of the day, games have to be played. Being recognized as one of the best 3A teams in the state is nice, but their ultimate goal is becoming number one and playing for a state championship at Jerry World in December. We never, you know, since I've been here, I've never got to walk out there and play for that number one spot, you know, at, at uh, Cowboy Stadium, you know, so again, to me, it's something you're going to play yourself out. Uh, you know, I, I hope we either get to that number one spot or we, you know, we play whoever is supposed to be number one and we get to see what we're like, you know, what we, what the team we have uh, when we play those guys, how you stack up against them. The 2024 season for the Hawks will be a tough one, especially with their goal of going all the way in mind. They'll take on six straight playoff teams to start their season. The biggest opponents coming right off the bat are the Mason Punchers, the Brownwood Lions, and the Jim Ned Indians. Their first district action will go down on October 11th against the Merkel Badgers, and their regular season concludes with a game against Stanton on November 8th. That's right, everyone. We finally made it to the NBA draft for teams like the Spurs and the Rockets. This has been the major event to look forward to post all star break and the former already has their foundation in place. Now it's all about building around him. The Spurs have two picks in the top eight tonight. Unlike last year, this year's draft has plenty of question marks surrounding where exactly San Antonio will go. Could it be a couple of guards? What about another big to pair with Wemby? Either way, the goal for the Spurs is to build around their French superstar. I'm still learning, but I'm, you know, I'm ready to, I'm ready to help as, as much as, as needed. But of course, uh, you know, staying in my role. And, uh, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think we're, I think we're building something great, and it's definitely something that, you know, they've done before. What about the Rockets, though? Well, they hold the number three overall pick in tonight's draft. But while some of you were asleep, the Rockets organization was working. They just pulled off a pick swap haul between themselves and the Nets and even a couple of extra first round picks. So I'm sure you're asking why. Well, here's a quick timeline. After making the trade at 9 10 p.m., reports came out that they had interest in acquiring Kevin Durant as early as tonight. About 30 minutes later, another report came out that Devin Booker was all also of interest in a potential trade. All of this to say tonight, the Rockets could go with either Reed Shepard at number three, which seems like it's been a lock forever, or they could pull off a mega draft night trade. Woo, I'll have the updates for you tonight at nine. I'm excited for this draft, and I know my sports fans at home are as well. With that said, keep it here for more news after the break.